Welcome everyone to another edition of Tech Tips. My name is Jared here at Lethal Performance and I'm with Mr. Ken Bionis of Palm Beach Dino. How's it going? Today we're going over a new product here at Lethal Performance. This is our new Gatekeeper wastegate setup for the 15 and up Mustangs that use the Vortec and Paxton Supercharger kits. A lot of people are curious, what exactly is the gatekeeper? What do we use it for? What does it do? Well, first off, this goes uh, between the uh, supercharger and the intercooler pipe. This pipe will bolt right into your Vortec or Paxton kit, and it adds a wastegate. Now, you're gonna ask, well, why do you want a wastegate on your inlet pipe? There's two different reasons. The first reason, and the most common reason, is going to be to bleed off boost at the high RPM level, and uh, it's going to allow you to run more boost down low. As most of you guys know, with centrifugal superchargers, the power curve is very linear. So you might make three pounds at 3,000, and then it goes up with RPM. Uh, with this, it allows you to run a smaller pulley. So maybe instead of three, three pounds at, at 3,000 RPM, it's at six pounds. But it doesn't mean that you're going to run 20 pounds up top. The wastegate opens, and it bleeds off the boost up top to your target boost. Now, the other use of this is for uh, high-powered cars to bleed off boost for launch. We did this back in like 2012 with a pro-charged car that uh, was having trouble leaving the line in the early days of tuning the 6R80, and we went 860s with that setup. So really, it's the same exact setup, except you would add a boost controller to it, and it would be open when you launch, and then you would close it after launch. Those are the, the two most important ways to use this. Okay, so basically most of the Paxton and uh, Vortec kits come from the factory with a certain size pulley to make a certain boost. Let's say it may be uh, 10 PSI you're pulling for. Um, so what they're seeing is, you know, with the centrifugal blower is that it builds boost and power as the RPMs go up. What you can do with this setup is basically run a smaller pulley to spin the blower faster, create that the, the RPM build, the boost build up, and actually still run that desired boost level by running the correct spring in there for the desired boost that you have. Right, it's going to significantly change the power curve of the vehicle with, with one versus without. It's going to be a much broader power band. The car is going to hit much harder. It, it, there's really no down, downside to it. Got it. So what are the typical gains that someone sees for, let's just say, a standard you know, Vortec Paxson car, like a HO kit you know, coming from them, again, a 10, 10 11 PSI kit? What, you know, what type of gains are we seeing? What, what, you know, really, where are the benefits along the curve? Well, you know, most likely if you're doing like a stock uh, engine vehicle on 93 octane, you probably are not gonna want, want to run more boost than you're already currently running. So peak power is gonna stay in the same ballpark. What you're going to gain is 20, 30, 40 horsepower throughout the curve down low, which is obviously going to add torque. Um, and that's really where the benefit comes in. Uh, or, you know, if you're pushing E85, for instance, um, and you want to say on a 15 plus, you say you want to make 800 horsepower, um, you're, st you're going to run more boost than the 10 pounds, uh, but you're going to bleed it off. So maybe you put a 18 pound uh, pulley on it, but you're going to bleed it off at 12 to 14 pounds. So it's really uh, about a wider power curve and more average power is okay. what you're getting out of it. Excellent. All right. So the basically about the kit itself, um, we chose certain components for this kit. The way we built it, we did it for a reason based off of Ken's experience as well as Will from Rarefab who's here with us today as well. Um, you know, all these components were put together to get certain results. And uh, Pretty much, you know, the valve that we're using is a Turbo Smart uh, 38 millimeter uh, wastegate. Comes standard with a seven pound spring. You can actually choose uh, different spring rates for the boost that you want to run. But why exactly? Again, the you know the components. Why were they chosen for this based off of your testing and experience? Well, you know, obviously there's tons of different wastegates out there to use. We use this particular one for two main reasons: the size of it. Um, now look at it this way. Okay, so the way this wastegate works is there's a valve in here. And um, most people know how engine valves work. It's the same basic idea, except it's pulling up instead of pushing down. As soon as this valve breaks the seat, you're going to have a certain amount of flow. OK? So now, when you're talking about sizing something like this, let's forget about this for a minute. Take your centrifugal car. Obviously, don't do this, but I'm sure people have done this by mistake. <laughs> Leave a vacuum line off that's maybe you know, a quarter of an inch or even smaller, and you're going to lose a pound or two of boost. 
Okay? So you don't want this to be too big. If it's too big, you're going to have a very inconsistent power curve when it opens. Okay? So what's going to happen is the power is going to come up. Really what we want it to do is to come up and kind of level off up top. With a large gate, what we found was it'll come up, dip, and sometimes not even recover. Um, so that's why we went with this smaller gate. Now, you might say, after saying that, well, like, you know, would smaller be better? Well, that's what this two bolt flange was chosen for because um, it'd be very, very simple for somebody to make their own plate and fine tune this setup to the exact response they want on a dyno at the track or whatever. So, you know, a flat plate with a drill, I think most people can handle that with two bolts or, you know, maybe someday you can offer a tuning package for it if a lot of people want it. But very, very simple to do. You can notch the little where the screws go and not even take the screws out, loosen them, slide different plates in there for different response rates of the, of the valve. If it's opening, you know, and dumping the boost a little too quick, you can obviously make that smaller. So, you know, that's really what went into it. And of course, attaching it, was, uh, you know, you definitely went above and beyond here with this design. It's a, it's a CNC piece that obviously is, uh, makes it much easier to fabricate, weld it onto the pipe, and it has a pre-tapped uh, setup for this boost line, which is what causes the gate to open. A gate like this opens somewhat from the pressure on the face of the valve, but it's also applying boost pressure to the diaphragm that's inside the uh, wastegate. So, Nothing but quality components. And also, uh, a real quick note about how this is attached. Um, I've heard a couple people say, uh, some other people put a, a plate of aluminum on here to make it stronger. Um, and why don't we have that? That's wrong. Well, I guess that's up for argument. But the main reason that you see, in my opinion, a plate welded on here is when it's used as a real wastegate, which is normally used on a turbo system on a 1,000 plus degree exhaust. This piece is attached to the exhaust, and then this piece is attached to the wastegate dump pipe, which may be attached to the exhaust, could be dumped, adds weight, heat, flex. It's very common for wastegates used in their normal purpose to crack, and that's why that was done. In this case, this is really no different than a blow-off valve. It's just like adding another flange. And I'm sure you've never, ever seen a supercharger company add a f an extra uh, strength there when they put the blow-off valve on. That's why. So I think the whole extra... Uh, reinforcement is really just carryover from what this is normally used for and maybe not understanding exactly side. why you need it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Instead of uh, the cold side where it's not seeing that temperature. Right. Yeah, I mean here, even before the intercooler, you know, two, 250, I'm not sure what the discharge temps are on those blowers because we obviously monitor them normally after the intercooler, but mm -hmm. max 300, you know, and uh, you can see EGTs on a turbo setup approaching, you know, a really extreme setups, 1800 degrees. So, of course, you know, you have to reinforce that with all the yep. flexing that happens and the heat. Everybody knows heat uh, fatigues metal. This is not going to get fatigued. Got it. Well, we are uh, actually have uh, one of these pipes here to test out. I think uh, I'm going to try and hang from it <laughs> to see yeah. how it works out. To show you how strong this really is. I'm going to put a valve on a pipe and I'm going to try and hang from it and show exactly how strong that piece is. All right, so we're going to do the, uh, the hang test. This is the gatekeeper uh, flange, CNC flange, uh, welded to the piping. And uh, we've got the TurboSmart 38 uh, millimeter wastegate on here. So I'm gonna hang from it. Let's see how well it holds up. Um, give it a shot. Yep, yeah, I would say it's pretty strong. <laughs> we actually are joined out by Will. Barnett from Rarefab and uh, does some awesome work here. Uh, is located right next to Ken uh, Palm Beach Dino in Boynton Beach, Florida. And I've known Will for a long time. Great guy, does amazing work. So I brought him in today. We got rid of Ken. We got him in here now to talk about uh, the design and uh, again, you know, some features on it, why you chose what you did. And uh, go ahead, Will, tell us about it. All right. So. Uh a couple of the reasons of why we designed this flange this way was to make it easy to produce as well as easy to assemble and as uniform as possible so that we could spread it across the market and just have a uniform uh, product. Uh, we chose to go with a CNC uh, unit um, 
because it just made it a lot stronger and a lot easier to fabricate and we didn't have to worry about having a weld around this flange area or uh, having any weakness issues. It also gave us the ability to actually put the boost reference inside the flange so that we didn't have to take the time to weld two flanges on here. We can just do one weld and then all your components are there. Um, and with the two bolt flange set up, it makes it a lot easier for you guys, the customer, to be able to bolt this on and take care of this, as well as the, uh, the things that Ken talked about earlier with uh, adding a secondary, yep. yeah, adding a secondary uh, restrictor on there to customize the boost. Um, we also, doing it out of CNC, allowed us to make the flange itself and the sidewall thicker so that when we go to weld it on, that we know that we're not dealing with a thinner piece of material. So the intercooler piping itself is already thin, so this makes it a little bit thicker, gives us a little bit more strength without having to take the, uh, you know, the extra time and put bracing or anything in that. Awesome. Um, also, talk about uh, one thing I think that we didn't go over too about this type of um, wastegate is that for customers that do want to run an electronic boost controller, you do have the ability to do that. So if you could just please explain, because some people may not understand how that works or, wh again, what's the reasoning behind that? All right. So uh, one of the main factors that we did it this way as well is so that we could run a boost controller with it. Uh, we actually did that on our test car after we got done with the initial spring testing and all that stuff. Uh, and essentially, you would just hook the electronic boost controller up the same exact way that you would on a turbo car. It's just that the wastegate's on the intercooler pipe. And what it allows you to do is you could run, let's say, a five pound spring in here. And then when you turn the boost controller off, you basically have low boost uh, so that if you, you know, driving conditions, you needed less power or whatever reason, you could turn the boost down. And then if you wanted to switch over to from like 93 over to E85 and you wanted to put a kill tune on it, uh, you would be able to just literally, just like a turbo car, just turn the boost up. So you could run five pounds of one part, you could run 10 pounds on another setting, you could run 15, 20 pounds on a later setting, and you don't even have to get out of the car. You could just sit there and then do it with a controller. Uh, so it's really taking the best of you know, the turbo world and bringing it to your Vortec and Paxson uh, setup to make it as useful as possible. Uh, you know, and obviously the, uh, the smaller the pulley you run, the more aggressive the power is going to come in. And honestly, with this setup, with the uh, boost controller setup, we basically were running the car at about 15 PSI and it literally comes in and it's a shelf and it just holds at 15 PSI. So awesome. Cool. And also we did overlook if we did want to run, we have the customizability of the, the flange here to run a uh, like a whistle tip. The whistle's got whoo! Uh, kind of adapter. I think a lot of our customers will love that. Duck calls, <laughs> whistle tips, woo woo for all of our customers. So uh, again, we are really excited to bring the, uh, the Gatekeeper wastegate setup uh, to the market for the uh, uh, 15 and up Vortec and Paxton supercharged cars. We're very grateful to be involved with the people who actually help us put this together. And uh, we definitely feel that uh, you guys are going to really like it. So if you do have any questions, please feel free to give us a call 561-753-8105. I want to wish all of my Jewish friends a very happy new year. Yeah, you know how many cut like takes is gonna go? It's all good. All right. Welcome everybody to Lethal Performance. My name is Jared and I'm accompanied by my friend and major tuner, Mr. Ken Bionis of Palm Beach Dino. How's it going? <laughs> <laughs> oh god this is where you get all the stupid from dude all right gatekeeper blow off valve kit for the uh 15 and up it's a wastegate kit not a blow off valve kit right the 15 and up mustang gts that use vortex and paxton superchargers vortex vortex yeah Okay. Well, basically, there's two main uses for this product. Oh, I just spit something out of my mouth. It's okay. Let's do it. It's a CNC piece that has the boost, boost, boost. Boof. <laughs> so Ken's uh, taking his clothes off for us right now. I'm gonna go and hang from this thing here. Hopefully, it doesn't 
break. Alice Phillips, come on down! Pretty good? Yep. 